welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So if you saw my last video where I showed you the new SG Lab 2.4 gigahertz 20 watt amplifier, then you might be interested in this video. So after aligning the dish the best I could, it was apparent that the trees and leaves are definitely affecting my reception of QO100 to the point where I cannot rely on it for reception. Now, luckily though, I was able to use the Goon Healy narrow band web SDR for reception because my uplink on 2.4 gigs was extremely strong, even through the trees and leaves. So this is my 1.2 meter dish, which would normally be a bit overkill for a narrow band on QO100 from my location. But because of the trees, I need to grab all that extra gain I can. As you can see here, this is the issue that I have with regarding to the trees in the way. Now here on the screen, we have SDR console on the left, which is driving the Pluto SDR. And on the right, we have a web browser opened on the narrowband web SDR. Now I tune to a clear frequency on the web SDR and then set SDR console to the same frequency. Now I did have to slightly adjust my TX frequency using the XIT feature, but it didn't need too much of an adjustment. Now after ensuring that the frequency was clear and testing my uplink transmission, I called CQ and quite promptly pair DC3ZB from Germany came back to my call and we had a rather nice QSO. Now the next 10 minutes or so of this video is going to be this QSO. So if you're not interested in the QSO, then feel free to skip towards the end. But if you want to listen to it, go ahead. Now the audio that you hear is directly from WebSDR. So this is the audio coming from QO100 and what I would hear if I wasn't subject to TreeDB. Power amplifier, power supplies, free driver and uh, uh, the T and uh, audio amplifier. Uh, so it's a kind of a compact unit that I can take with me and it runs off 12 volt or uh, 220. So uh, that's the setup at this end. Uh, Mike, back to you. Uh, Mike Zero, uh, Delta Quebec Whiskey. This is Delta Charlie Tweet Zulu Bravo. Yeah, Delta Charlie Tree Zulu Bravo. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey returning. I wonder how how you're uh, synchronizing your uh, Pluto. Uh, I saw there was a couple of different options um, to have like an external GPS. Um, I had tried the Lime SDR Mini before, but I found that it, it drifted really badly. So I got the Pluto and uh, I, I purchased the upgraded uh, TCXO from, I think it was from Mouser. Uh, and then I just replaced that, a direct replacement. It was quite fiddly, had to use a microscope. But uh, since, um, since doing it, it seems to be really, really stable and I'm really pleased with it. Um, I know that some people do use like external GPS. <laughs> But um, uh, but yeah, back to my uh, receive situation. Hopefully, when the uh, when the winter comes and the leaves drop off the um, off the trees, I'll be able to receive QO100 and work it uh, full duplex without having to rely on the internet, <laughs> which is uh, a bit of a shame. But um, at least I'm able to get my signal up to you guys and uh, and have a chat. Uh, Delta Charlie Three ZB M Zero DQW. M0 DQ uh, W. This is Delta Charlie Tweet Zulu Bravo. Yeah, okay, Matt. Uh, so I have a 0.2 parts per million uh, uh, crystal or T TXCO or whatever it is, and um, uh, I did not put it in because it is too delicate for for my eyes and hands. So uh, another radio hand did it for me. And um, uh, it probably seems to work uh, okay. Um, uh, now, you ask about synchronization and calibration. See, <laughs> the way I'm doing it is that uh, first I synchronized uh, to my, my um, setup to the middle beacon. And um, then I go into calibration. And I make a short whistle, and then uh, I notice uh, if it drifts up or down, and then I correct uh, the, the calibration frequency. And there's two ways of doing it. Uh, the, the one that's actually called calibration, I'm not using. I'm using the one 
that in the TX, uh, after the three dots, um, there is um, uh, a new menu coming up and it talks about Pluto. I go into the Pluto and uh, then there is a, a, um, a window coming up that uh, where, where you can actually calibrate your, um, your, your Pluto to 40 megahertz. And um, then I, I, I'll show you if, if uh, you might not be able to see it if you are using the website, but uh, at least you can hear it. Um, I crank up my, I, I'm using a speaker here. So I crank up the speaker a little bit. And, and then you notice that the, the whistle there doesn't drift. And uh, just adjust this uh, calibration until it doesn't drift. Because if it goes up, I lower uh, my uh, clock or crystal or the oscillator. And if it goes the other way, I, I do the opposite. So I, I, I have aligned my transmit and receive um, uh, that way. Uh, because if, if if there was a frequency offset, uh, the window or that whistle would go either way, uh, if you are too high or too low with your clock. So that's how I cal calibrated. Uh, that was a long story from here. So uh, Mike, back to you, Matt. Here's DC3ZB. The DC3ZB is at 0 DTWN. Okay, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, the way that I uh, calibrated this for, for talking now, because um, this is actually my first QSO since setting up the uh, dish in the garden this afternoon. Um, so I tuned to to uh, 104.89.700 on the web SDR, and then I set SDR console to the same frequency. And then I started talking, um, just doing like test audio to see what I sounded like. And I, the only adjustment I had to make was on the bottom left hand corner of the screen of SDR console, there's the XIT, and I had to do a plus 0.100. And, uh, and to me, my sound audio, my audio sounds, uh, I sound on frequency to me. Ho hopefully I sound on frequency to you too. <laughs> But um, I'd better go and check the amplifier because um, this is the first time having a long QSO on it and I'm running full power. So I need to go and make sure, see how hot it is and uh, kind of determine whether I need to put a heat sink or fan on it. So uh, I'll put it back to you for a final there, Pear. Uh, nice to work with you this afternoon and uh, hopefully I'll catch you again on Oscar 100. Delta Charlie 3 Zulu Bravo, Mike Zero Delta Cubic Whiskey. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. This is Delta Charlie 3 Solo Bravo. Yeah, okay. Uh, no problem, Matt. Um, uh, but you are way stronger, or you are stronger than uh, than the beacons. So uh, if you have a problem with heating, uh, uh, there's no problem for you to, to just reduce it. You're still coming through extremely strong. And uh, so... Um, uh, there's no problems uh, reading you, uh, and your modulation is also, in my opinion, very good. And you don't splatter or anything like that, so it you know, seems like you're not overdriving anything in your uh, transmitter lineup. But anyway, uh, it's uh, nice talk. It was nice talking to you. So I wish you a nice weekend, and um, uh, hope to talk to you soon again over the bird. So all the best and 73. This is Delta Charlie 3 Solo Bravo. Yeah, thanks very much. I hope you have a uh, lovely weekend and I uh, hope you guys stay safe. Delta Charlie 3 Zulu Bravo, Mike Zero, Delta Cubic Whiskey QRT. Bye bye. Bye bye, Matt.
So I think from this experiment, we can safely say that 2.4 gigs goes through the trees and leaves better than 10 gigahertz does. Overall, I'm absolutely pleased with how well this amplifier performs. After the QSOs, I did go and check the amplifier casing and it was rather warm to touch, but not overly hot. I think I will definitely find a suitable heatsink and attach it to the SG Lab amplifier just to be sure. Now, after all, the cooler we keep these type of components, the less chance of damage and the more efficient they will be. Now, I recently asked you guys what you'd like to see if I was to do a live stream. Now, one subscriber mentioned about me doing a live QSO session on Oscar 100. Now that I'm almost ready, I think this is something that I could do. So let me know what you guys think and if you'd like to see a live stream of me operating through QO100. Until the next video, guys, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.